What is a Christian response to divorce? I am a child whose parents divorced. My father is a pastor, and it was obviously painful for him, for my mother. My, both of my parents have remarried. It's personal. It is rich with history of different responses. My father could have lost his career. Some pastors do uh, have to stop being in ministry. So I thought for this Ask Pastor Brian, I would go to the Pastor Brian, who is Brian Sr., who's lived through divorce. My father's thoughts on a Christian response to divorce. This is the apple house at our family uh, place in the mountains. It's called the apple house because there's a basement underneath where they stored apples. This is one of about 40 apple trees. Inside the apple house, uh, outbuilding, guest room, bathroom, uh, because it's the apple house, we have the theme of red. There's some red on the, a lot of red on the bed itself, and then in the quilt, uh, you got a little red blended in there. There's an old preacher story about how trauma, it's like red, it's bright, and it's uh, ooh, ooh, tough. But when you take that thread of red and blend it in with uh, another, uh, other types of threads, like with the pillow covers here and um, the quilt, it makes a beautiful, beautiful color and a beautiful pattern. A divorce, uh, I went through a divorce, Brian and I, my son Brian and I went through a divorce about um, 42 years ago. And uh, Boy, that's red, that's bright, that's, that's uh, nobody debates whether it's sinful or destructive. If you've gone through it, if you've experienced it, it's, it's tough, it's tough. Uh, but if you can involve God's Spirit in it, and God's Spirit is good for those great times. When you're in a loveless relationship or a destructive relationship, you're trying to make a choice between two bad options. Do I get divorced? Do I stay in a destructive relationship? It's not black and white. That's what the Holy Spirit's for, to deal with those gray areas when you just don't know what to do. If you're facing a divorce, if you're in a divorce, if you're dealing with the aftermath of a divorce, God's Spirit is a key, is a key. It's called uh, the Comforter. God's Spirit is called the Comforter. That Latin comes from the Latin word forte. It's the root of it, with strength, forte. The comforter of God's Spirit when you're going through a tough time. It's not comforter as like, oh, poor pitiful, as they say up here. Bless your poor pitiful. Keep picking a little hard. No, no. It's whap. Go get them. You can do this. Brings strength. Brings perseverance. Brings endurance. Um, uh, it gives you the resolve to deal with and bring something good out of this. The other word that I love for God's Spirit is wonderful counselor. If you're dealing with the gray areas of life, whether it be a tough relationship or anything, uh, the wonderful counselor helps you in the gray areas. Uh, so how do you find that guidance and that wisdom and to make the right decisions and to deal with one more day? Comforter gives you the strength to get through one day at a time, just get through this day, but how do I make the decisions? Uh, well, in the strength of many, in the counsel of many, there's strength, it says, there's wisdom. Uh, so you go to somebody who loves you, go to somebody who loves the Lord, who knows the scripture, ask them, what should I do here? Look for God's counsel through other people who love you and love the Lord. Go to a professional. Oh, I, I'm in a struggle, race. My, my spouse won't go with me. You go by yourself. Find a, a person who is effective as a counselor and listen to what they say and find guidance and expect God to speak through them. And again, if you've never done it and you're in dealing with the aftermath, deal with the aftermath with counseling because uh, you need uh, God's Spirit to help you endure. Now, if you will use God's Spirit, then He can blend that, the red, the brightness, the, the pain of what you're facing or enduring or have endured. He can blend that in to your life and in to the fabric and weave it into the fabric of your life and bring something good. I remember the first time I went out with Brian's second mother. I kissed her on the doorstep of her apartment. I couldn't walk back to my car. 
I staggered back to my car, literally. And I called my mother the next day. I said, Mother, I, I, I think I'm going to be in love again. <laughs> mother got on a plane, flew down from Atlanta three days later. So she wanted to meet this person. And uh, so we picked her up at the airport and spent about 10 minutes driving over to her apartment where she, Jan went into the kitchen and get mother a little hot tea. You know, Cola was her name. Cola, would you like some tea? Yes. So as soon as she goes out of the dining room into the kitchen, mother leans over and whispers to me, God, put that woman in your life. You would never have had enough sense on your own to pick her. So if you can trust in God, rely on God, uh, he can bring good from a divorce. From Yes, it's sinful. Yes, it's broken. Yes, it's destructive. Anybody who's gone through it will agree to that. But one, God's mercy, God's comfort is greater than the sin. That's the Bible's clear on that. Yes, we're broken. And yes, God is greater than our brokenness and can bring good from it. If you have lived through divorce yourself or have a connection to a family member who is going through it and does not have support, I encourage you to find someone to talk to, to work through your feelings, and to remember God is always in the midst of our pain and brokenness. And nothing is beyond the reach of God's mercy, kindness, and grace. Thanks for listening today. God bless.